This is Anthony with HSM Works. In CAM Mania, you will start by creating a job setup, which consists of defining your model, stock body, and fixturing, as well as a work coordinate system. After creating your job setup, your next task will be to create operations necessary to cut your finished part. As part of CAM Mania, you will also be required to simulate your toolpaths, create a graphical setup sheet, and post your CNC program. The last task will be viewing and backplotting your CNC program using HSM Express Edit, the CNC program editor included with HSM Express. Once you have completed these tasks, or maybe somewhere in the middle of the process, you will be required to make changes to the part model. Changes that will require you to regenerate the toolpaths, recreate the setup sheet, repost your CNC program, and backplot the file in HSM Express Edit. Each phase will be timed and the shortest time wins. Now I'm going to turn this over to Al Watmal of Inspratec, who will go over the sample exercise to get you prepared for the competition. Thanks, Anthony. Before we get started, let's take a quick look at the HSM Express user interface. Like SolidWorks, all of the commands you will use can be accessed from the CAM tab of the Command Manager or via a right-click shortcut menu on the CAM Manager tree. The CAM Manager lists all of the job setups and operations used to machine the part. Let's edit an operation and review the layout. Operations are organized into five logical tabs. Tooling, Geometry, Heights, including clearance and cutting depths, Passes, where you refine the strategy, and Linking, where entry, exit, and rapid movements are controlled. With that said, we're ready to work through the process of programming a part similar to the one you will be presented with in CAM Mania. Let's work through this first example. The first thing we need to do is define the job setup. So on the CAM tab of the Command Manager, click Job. To define the model, I'm going to right click and use Select Other to select the solid body of the model and then move to the stock definition options. In this case, for the stock definition, we're defining the stock using a solid body and we're going to select the previously created solid body. For the fixturing, we can select the two soft jaws. Finally, we want to set the working coordinate system at top corner three. With the working coordinate system set, we can click OK and our job setup has been created. Before I start creating toolpaths, I like to hide the solid body of my stock to make the selection process easier. The first thing we're going to do is qualify the top of the part using a facing operation. So click Face and open the tool library. Select the 3 quarter inch tool and click OK. The facing operation is automatically created. Next, we'll rough out the three pockets using a high-speed roughing strategy called 2D Adaptive Clearing. Open the tool library, select the quarter-inch tool we want to use for this operation, and then click the bottom face of the three pockets. Click OK, and the roughing operation is complete. Note, HSM Express automatically set the top of the pockets at the top of stock, and the depth of the operation at the face we selected before calculating the most efficient way to remove the material. Now we're ready to finish the pockets. This time use the 2D pocketing strategy so we can apply a finish pass to the walls of the pocket. We're using the same tool so we can move to the geometry tab and select those bottom three faces. On the passes tab, apply a finish pass and uncheck Stock to Leave. Click OK, and the Finish Pass is created. Now we need to rough and finish the outside of the part. Again, to rough the outside of the part, we're going to use our 2D Adaptive Clearing Strategy and the same quarter inch tool. On the Geometry tab, we want to select the outside chain of the part and uncheck Machine Cavities so we machine on the outside of this chain instead of on the inside. On the previous operation, our depths were automatically defined because we selected the faces at the depth we wanted to machine to. 
However, in this case, the contour was not selected at the machining depth. So move to the Heights tab, and in the bottom drop-down, define the bottom of the operation at From Model Bottom instead of From the Contour Selected. Additionally, we want to machine past the bottom of the part by 10 thousandths of an inch, so enter a bottom offset value of negative decimal zero one. Finally, move to the Passes tab and zero out the axial stock to leave before clicking OK to produce the operation. To finish the outside of the part, we're going to use a 2D contour. We're using the same quarter inch tool and on the Geometry tab, we can select that same chain. Make sure the arrow is on the outside of the contour, indicating we're machining around the outside of that chain, and move on to the Heights tab, where we can define the bottom from the model bottom. For this finishing pass, we're going to machine beyond the bottom of the part by 5 thousandths of an inch, so enter an offset value of negative decimal 005. Click OK, and the finishing operation is complete. Next, we're going to break all of the sharp edges on this part using the chamfering option of the 2D contouring operation. Open the tool library and select our quarter inch chamfering tool. Activate the geometry tab and select the bottom edge of each of the chamfers that have already been produced in SolidWorks. With the edges selected, move to the Passes tab where you'll note the chamfering option has automatically been activated because we're using a tool capable of producing a chamfer. There's no need for a chamfer width because we're working with edges that were already chamfered using SolidWorks. However, we will enter a tip offset value of 20 thousandths of an inch, so we're not machining with the tip of our tool. Click OK, and the chamfering operation is produced. We're almost done machining the part. The last task is to machine the holes. For this example, we want to machine four 632 holes with spot drill, drill, and tapping operations. Let's get started. Click Drilling, open the library, and select the quarter inch spot drill. Activate the Geometry tab, and select the conical face of one of the spots. When a conical face is selected, HSM Express sets the depth of the operation correctly so that the tip of the drill produces the conical face. Use Select Same Diameter to find all of the other holes within the part that are the same size. Click OK, and the spot drilling operation is complete. Now let's do our tap drilling operation. Open the library and select the number 24 drill. Move to the Geometry tab, and select the tap drill hole modeled in SolidWorks. By checking Select Same Diameter, we're going to select all of the holes, and by checking Merge Hole Segments, the tap drilling operation will start at the top of the part and finish with compensation for the tip of the cutter to produce the entire hole. We can move to the Passes tab, to change this operation to a chip breaking cycle and click OK. The final operation is going to be the tapping operation, so select Drilling, activate the library, and select the 632 tab. Activate the Geometry tab, and simply select the cylindrical face of the tapped hole. Use Select Same Diameter, and click OK. Because we'd selected a tap, the operation was automatically defined as a tapping operation. We're now ready to run simulation to verify that all of the operations have been produced that are needed. Select the job to ensure that we simulate all of the operations within the job, and then click Simulate. I like to hide my tool paths and show my stock. When my stock is showing, I prefer to show the stock as transparent. With your options set, we can run the simulation. In this case, I'm going to speed the simulation up.
and we verified that all of the necessary operations have been produced for this setup. You've completed part one. Once you have simulated the operations, the clock will stop. This is Anthony again with HSM Works. You've completed part one. Now at this point, you will be handed a sheet outlining changes that need to be made to the model. As is typical in the real world, users often find themselves right in the middle of programming a part when there's a design change. You will be required to make the changes to the model, regenerate the toolpaths, simulate the updated operations, create a new setup sheet, and post a new program. Finally, you will be asked to open and backplot the file in HSM Express Edit like you did in Part 1. That will conclude Part 2 and your total time. The clock begins when you start making the first change. Let's do that now. So you've been issued your design change. Let's work through the process of updating the part and tool paths. You'll find that by leveraging the parametric abilities of SOLIDWORKS, this process is going to be quick and painless. We're going to start with the update to the clearance heights. Window select all of your tool paths, right click, and select Compare and Edit. In the search box, begin typing Clearance until you see the Clearance Height Offset. Under Edit All, change the Clearance Height Offset to 0.2 and click OK. We're warned that we've updated all these tool paths. Click Yes and move to the SOLIDWORKS Feature Manager to make changes to the part. Select any face of the part and change the outside dimension to 3.5 inches, rebuild, and update. Finally, on the feature tree, unsuppress all of the added features by right-clicking the Added Features folder and selecting Unsuppress. When we return to the CAM Manager, we can regenerate the toolpaths, and there's nothing more that we need to do. Conclude with generating a setup sheet, saved with your name, and post-processing the code. Use the generic host post, enter your program name as 0001, and click Post. Click Save, and when the NC Editor opens, move to the Backplot tab, start the Backplot, and you're finished. Thanks, Al. This is Anthony again with HSM Works. Once again, make sure you download and install the latest version of HSM Express, as well as the sample Camania instructions and SOLIDWORKS file. Camania with HSM Express will be in booth 313 in the Partner Pavilion at this year's SOLIDWORKS World. Now have fun practicing, and we'll see you in San Diego.